ready? Begin. It being 1.30, we're going to commence today's proceedings before the Special Magistrate for Code Enforcement for the City of Palatka. By way of introduction, my name is Ron Brown. I am an attorney appointed by the City Commission pursuant to state statute and uh, city code to preside over today's proceedings. What we have today is what's called a quasi-judicial proceeding. It's not a formal court of law. We do not have to follow the formal rules of civil procedure or the formal rules of evidence. We are required by law, however, to observe the basic requirements of due process and fairness to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard and to hear the allegations and evidence against them. Persons who are respondents will also have an opportunity to present any evidence and testimony that they may have, ask any questions that they may have of the staff. My job is basically a neutral, I'm a decider. I don't have um, a position one way or another on any case. Uh, and I've listened to the cases as they were presented and I will make a decision regarding whether or not there's a violation. The city will be making a presentation alleging certain violations of city code on certain property owned by the respondents. They'll present some evidence in support of those violations. Uh, there will be an opportunity at that point for the respondents to present any testimony evidence that they may have uh, regarding uh, a defense to that violation or any of the things they would like to say. It's a pretty open proceeding. It's not terribly formal, but we do want you to feel free to say what you need to say, what you believe you need to say. We'll make sure that you have every opportunity to say it and present any evidence that you have. One of the requirements of law, however, is that the evidence be what's called substantial and competent. What that means in layman's terms is that it be evidence that a reasonable person could use to make a, a rational decision about a subject. And so there's not a lot of specific definition to it other than it be basically credible and that it be based on the personal knowledge of the person giving the testimony. However, that also requires that the testimony be sworn. So I'm gonna ask that all those persons who will be testifying today, including the city staff, to please stand. I'm gonna administer a brief oath. And let me see, we have two respondents who are here. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you should give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And let the record show that all the city staff and two respondents in the audience have indicated uh, an affirmation. We're going to take the cases in the order of agenda item, except that those persons who are actually here as respondents get priority. It's my understanding that we do have such a situation. Uh, so we'll call the first case, case number 2022-32, property located at 2120 Oak Street in Palatka, the owners of record, Michael Gustafson and Eric Jones, I believe that's correct. And are you both respondents? Yes. Come on up, please. And Mr. Gustafson? Yes. Uh, you're here. And Mr. Jones, correct? You're here, Mr. Jones? All right, very good. Thank you very much. All right, um, Mr. Green is going to present the city's position. The, the, he's got some photographs primarily, and there's some other evidence that we have that you'll be able to see on the screen. Have you had a chance to look at the whole file? I mean, to see, yeah, was, okay, very good. We'll make sure that you, you had the opportunity to do so. All right, Mr. Green. Yes, sir. the case of the first observed six, 23, 22, 20, and the notice of hearing was sent out seven, seven, 2022. And the green card came by sign for the notice of hearing. The site posting was on seven, seven, 2022 also. Um, the violations are 3032A, two overgrown grass and brush. The second was 30 169, building fronts and sides on um, streets and public areas, deteriorating paint. The third one was 30 213, responsibility of mortgage E and owners of vacant, black, unsecured, or abandoned structures. Um, the fourth one is 30 169, building fronts and sides on um, streets and public areas, rotten and wicked wood. Session 30-32 is the fifth one, and it's probation <clears throat> prohibited conditions and public nuisance description. Um, the roofing is in disrepair. All right. And as to notice, we the, the, both respondents are present. Yes, sir. So notice was apparently successful with regard to that. All right. Before you begin, you looks like you've got five separate violations. And I just, for the record, want to make sure everybody understands precisely which ordinances are affected. It appears the first one um, was 30-32A due to prohibited conditions and public nuisances overgrown grass. And this is included in the, the file. That section indicates that excessive and untended growth of grass, weeds, brush, branches, and other overgrowth 
uh, is prohibited on properties within the city. Uh, second one, 30 169, building fronts and sides of budding streets or public areas deteriorating paint. That section reads in pertinent part. Um, one moment. Think about paper. 30 169, subsection A, all deteriorated structural and decorative elements visible from a public right of way should be repaired, replaced. <laughs> Every part of such structure visible from a public right of way or abutting a street shall be made structurally sound. Rotten or weakened portions shall be removed, repaired, or replaced in a manner compatible with the rest of the structure or to match original materials and construction techniques. All exposed, uh, I think that was it. Uh, the next one was section 30-213A of the city code. Uh, responsibilities of mortgagee and owners of vacant, blighted, unsecured, or abandoned structure and the specific allegation they're opening, allowing in rain and wind. 30-213, uh, provides in pertinent part, all entrances, windows, and other openings shall be secured with approved materials, provided such materials completely seal all entrances, windows, and other openings, thereby protecting the interior of the structure from wind, rain, and other naturally occurring elements. Entrances to the windows above the ground floor should be guarded as secure if entrances are locked or not otherwise open to entry and windows contain glass that's not cracked or broken or shutters but prevent entry. Then you have another violation of 30-169 due to rotten and weakened wood regarding building fronts and sides. Uh, and we have already cited that section 30-169A which prohibits um, structures visible from a public right of way or budding a street uh, rotten or weakened portions shall be removed, repaired, replaced in a manner compatible with the rest of the structure. And finally, 30-32A, prohibited conditions and public nuisances, roofing and disrepair. And that section of the code That was section and subsection 10. It looks like fair to replace or repair with similar improved material in a reasonable period not to exceed 60 days, broken or missing building components, including but not limited to doors, windows, roofing material, siding, and drives, walks outside of the right of way, which detract from the aesthetics of the neighborhood or prohibited. So those are the five violations. Mr. Green? Yes, sir. That's just the overview of the house. That's roofing and disrepair that was taken June 22, right. 22. And that's just the roofing and disrepair 30 32 A10. Yes, sir. Okay, that's slide one. That's a close up picture taken in June 22, 22. Is this going to require complete replacement of the roof? Yes, sir. The back, it's a, the back side is also the same way. Yes. Yeah. Hang on a second. Here we get you. Next. That's the rotten and weakened wood with deteriorating paint along with the roof and disrepair also. Is the city gonna let that wood stay there if it's, well, you have to take out the rotten wood, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir, we'll replace all of that. Okay, next. Now on that's slide four. That's the other side of the house. And this is more roo yes, roofing disrepair and rotten and weakened deteriorating paint. Yes, that's the other side of the house. Also taken June 22nd, 2022. Okay. What's the roof and the paint? Excuse me, old growing grass. As you can see, the deteriorated paint also. Okay. And which side of the house is this? It's the front of the house. Front of the house? Okay. Yes. This face is what, Oak Street? Yes, sir. This house isn't on a corner, is it? It's just got one. It's basically the front, what's visible. It's, it's corner, but you really can't see from uh, that suite. Uh, Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. Okay. This picture was taken Monday, 7 18, 2022. And back to the roof. Yes, sir. We're talking about the. Um, the gable here, the yes, front? Sir. Yes, sir. 
That's another picture of Wilton. Oh, that's the soffit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Could you also take in Monday, 7 18, 2022. Okay. And that's old grown grass. Yeah, before you before you move on to the grass, so is this is this basically about the roof and the the gables yes, on sir. the house? Yes, sir. yes, sir. In the city's view, what's it going to take to make an effective repair that would satisfy the statute? Remove and repair. Is can Re you repair it or does it require it to remove it? Okay, put a new one on. Yes, place. Okay. And now you got some overgrown grass in violation of 3032A2. Yes. Okay. This is slide by the B. Yes, this is the end. Okay. And what what needs to be done there? Just mow it? Yes, sort of move over, over all the overgrown grass and brush. Okay. There's no man-made materials in the yard that can tell me. Okay. So basically we're looking at a new roof. Yes, and mowing the yard. Yes. Sir. Okay. Did you take the photograph you presented today as demonstrative evidence? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, do they represent the condition of the property on the date on which you took them? Yes, sir. Okay. How much time are you looking for? Um, 120 days. So 120 days to get the new roof on it, or what? Yes, sir. <laughs> Most okay. times they come in, they come and talk to Is um, that possible in today's day and time? If most times they come in and show good favor and talk to my superintendent, they probably have more time. All right. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. Well, they're saying you need a new roof. I have to admit, it does look like you might need a new roof sure. uh, sooner than later. It's, was this house in this condition when you all got it? Yes, sir. yes sir. All right. Yes, so you took this on as a project. Yes, sir. Yes, we're Bless you. <laughs> Actually, it was in worse condition. Um, okay. The, we've already cleaned the yard up extensively, um, taken out several trees and cleaned it up quite a bit. Now it is overgrown. The yard definitely needs attention. Um, we would like to ask that we have 120 days to remove the roof completely and then possibly get another extension to put the new roof on. Because as you suggested, that's Probably. Let me ask you this. Usually when the city brings one of these here, mm -hmm. they've been trying to get some compliance and they've had some difficulty. And I understand there've been a lot of things going on in our society and environment and that have interfered with progress we might like to make, on, especially when things involving construction. Having said that, how long has this process been going on, Mr. Green? What are we looking at? Well, we just became proactive in May, so May, but... Me doing another house across the street, I've seen it uh, maybe way back in February or April. Maybe. And you realize this doesn't start until somebody complains. So somebody's looking at yes. this. And so it's, that's one of the joys of this business these days is complaints. This was a proactive case, Mr. Brown. I'm sorry? This was a proactive case. Okay. That being off, oh, city, is, city, city's, pro, city's being proactive. Excuse me. All right. Um, <laughs> having said that, they're looking, they think they can get the roof off in 120 days. Is that going to require a demolition permit? Yes, sir. Okay. And can, do they need to get a building permit yes, for putting the new roof on? Yes, sir. You, can you get all that done? We're a licensed building contractor. Right. What, and the reason I'm asking these questions, what the city's looking for usually in these kind of circumstances is a little push to get something done. Has, there's been, and I understand the reasons why it hasn't been done, but you're not the first ones to come here with difficulties in trying to deal with some of these issues. And some of them uh, are pretty profound and you've got a profound roof issue that needs to be looked at. Sir, they, need prog they need some progress they can rely on. We just purchased the home this past September. Okay. So like I said, we knew what condition was in and we knew we were gonna have to work on it. Um, like I said, we have done a lot of work in the yard, just, other so, projects we're doing, we, it is it is on our schedule. Probably the last quarter of 23 before we actually start yeah. the, the renovation. Yeah, I think what the city's looking for is a way to kind of cement it on your schedule. That yeah, <laughs> they got your attention and say, we really need to get well, this work done. Well, what we're hoping to do is just find <laughs> a happy medium where, it, where it's safe mm. and everybody's happy with the condition. All right. They're saying 120 days, get the roof removed. Get all the permits for demolition. 
What is the city asking for? I mean, there's a violation. Now we're just figuring out how to fix it effectively. Because the key that I'm looking at is that the city's asking for a 125 buck a day fine in the event of non-compliance. So what's going to be compliance in 100? Uh, 120 days to work on getting the, the roof repaired or replaced. Also the cleaning of the grass and debris in front of it and try to get the house painted and everything sealed. Sure. As long as you're showing that you are making progress, we'll, we'll look at working at giving some type of extension toward the end there, but we're not going to do any extensions until we see progress in place. And we'll help them out with this on that. And I think they can get the yard done in that time period. And it's sure. Mostly it's mowing it and cleaning it up, making it look nice. Well, we, we can get the yard done. We're, we're confident we can get the demo done. I have a question regarding openings. Are we okay well, with ceiling openings so that no one can get in there in the building? And that's what I mean by building has to be secure right. sealed down so nobody can get inside the building. And that's what I'd like the record to show today is let's make sure we have a fairly clear picture of what's going to be required for compliance yeah. within that 120 day period. That's what they're looking for. And that's what get, gives you something to push against. So they need demolition permit, building permit, get the roof off. Roof off and secure it so nobody can get in there and also get the yard and debris cleaned up. That work with you guys? One point, we're calling demo permit, building permit as two separate things. I know they are. We need to go pull a permit to get the demolition done. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get a building permit, but that won't be until right. we actually start construction. Mm -hmm. Just make sure they're clear on what it is they need to get. Yes, okay. Sir. All right, but I don't, I don't want I don't want somebody coming back and saying, "Well, I didn't know I had to get this right. within that circumstance." And but they could so in 120 days you can get the roof off, get the house secured, get the yard clean, yes. and then you still got a problem with fixing the roof. Yes. Well, let me ask you this: Is it is it violate the code not to have a roof on it? That's what it means. They gonna secure it. Make sure the house. All is right. Secured. Yes, that answers that question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so when nobody can get inside the house. So everybody clear what we're looking for? All right. We're going to find that there's a violation of 30-32A due to the overgrown grass, 30-169 due to deteriorating paint, 30-2131A due to the openings on the top allowing the wind and the rain, 30-169 due to rotten and weakened wood on the building fronts and sides uh, facing the Oak Street, and 30-32A roofing and disrepair. And we're going to enter an order finding the violations requiring compliance with the uh, ordinances no later than the end of the business day on November 16th, 2022, which is 120 days. Is that right, Ms. Hughes? Uh, in the event of noncompliance, a fine of $125 a day will commence on Thursday, November 17th, 2022. And hopefully we won't get there. There's no other cost at this particular time. Just you don't want those fine clocks to stop. And you need to stay in touch with uh, Mr. Green yes, with regard to your progress. And I think if you do that, you'll be fine. Okay. And okay. Thank you all for coming. Yes, sir. Anything else? Question. I'm just so unclear. Um, after the 26th, we can apply for another extension to get the actual new. And then you'll have to deal with the city. Well, on. You well, can apply for everything. <laughs> so that I understand is if we meet all the requirements, but they're just not out. This violation will be happy. It should be. It's only if there is another one that appears. Yes, right. But eventually, you're going to have to put that roof on it. Oh, that's well. Is that that ongoing process? That, that is our our plan. Is we've got one currently that we're remodeling. There's another one just down the street. That's our next one. This will be the one after that. All right. So it's it's on our For what it's worth to you, if you're buying up houses trying to fix them, bless you. Um, we are. That is our goal. Are there some others who are doing that, and and uh, we appreciate that. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. But don't forget the compliance part. <laughs> All right, do we have any other respondents present today? Oh, any sure. look? We do not have any on Zoom, sir. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the 516 Kirby and put it last. I'm gonna move 516 Kirby to the end and see if anyone does appear by Zoom. Okay, and we're gonna take 809 North 14th Street, case number 2022-033. <clears throat> Property again, 809 North 14th Street. Uh, owner of record is 5T Wealth Partners LP. Is there anyone representing 5T Wealth Partners LP present today? And we see and hear no one. All right, Mr. Green, tell us about this case yes, and this is give, also give, us some, give us some due process on notice. And what kind of notice did you provide? Um, a mail um, certification letter. Go ahead, you go with your. Your case, which is fine. Okay. You bring it up. 
Just explain it. Just explain how you follow the statute on giving them notice. <laughs> Yes, and this is also a proactive case. It was first observed since 22, um, two, 22 and okay. notice of hearing was, was sent at 7-7-2022. Um, the green card did not come back signed for the notice of hearing, but the green card did come back for um, the voluntary compliance. Okay. And the address for the respondent at PO Box 162121 Altamont Springs, Florida 32716 is the official address of record on the property appraiser and tax collector's records. Yes, sir. Very good. Did you file and post the property? Yes, sir. 7 9 2022. And you have a uh, affidavit of service of notice? Yes, sir. Okay. And I see the affidavit. So I shall make sure I see the oh. affidavit. It should be the fourth page. Okay. Just bear with me. Have you had any contact with the respondent or owners? Not besides voluntary compliance, community card coming back. Besides that, haven't. I'm not sure I see the affidavit in my pack anyway. Here it is. I have it. No, thank you. I think you served it on um, July 7th. Yes, by posting both at the property here in City Hall, correct? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Thank you. If you have no contact with the owners or any representatives of the owners. No, it's not besides the, the code of home, the voluntary letter coming back with the green card signed, but I did not get a, the notice of hearings card, green card come back. All right. You got looks like four violations. Please yes. proceed. It's the first violation is 30 213 uh, unsecured into the building, into the buildings. The second was section 32 30 32 overgrown grass. The second was 30 171 broken, mm -hmm. broken windows. And the fourth one is 30 169 rotten and weakened wood and deteriorating paint. All right, for the record, let me just briefly go over the uh, ordinances uh, at issue. Uh, you had 30-213-1A, unsecured entry to buildings. That provision, uh, subsection one provides a mortgagee or owner of a blighted, unsecured or abandoned structure. So secure and maintain all entrances and all other openings of the structure. Uh, including but not limited to windows and doorways. Such blighted or unsecured abandoned structures should be secured as follows. All entrances, windows, and other openings should be secured in, with approved materials, provided such materials completely seal all entrances, windows, and other openings, thereby protecting the interior of the structure from wind, rain, and other naturally occurring ele elements. You also cite 30-32A, prohibited conditions of public nuisances due to overgrown grass. That provision in subsection two provides excessive and unintended growth of grass, weeds, brush, and branches, other overgrowth is prohibited under this section of the code. Uh, you cite 30 171 windows due to broken windows. Um, subsection A of that statute shows that every broken, cracked, or missing window should be repaired or replaced with glass. Windows must fit tightly to have sashes of proper size and sign. Um, sashes with rotten wood, broken joints, loose mullions, or mutton shall be replaced. And finally, 30 169, rotten and weakened wood and deteriorating paint on building fronts and sides, abutting streets, or public areas. And that provision is in subsection A. Again, all decorated, all deteriorated structural and decorative elements visible from a public right of way should be repaired or replaced. Every part of such structure visible from a public right of way or a budding street should be made structurally sound. Rotten or weakened portions shall be removed, repaired, or replaced in a manner compatible with the rest of the structure to match the original materials and construction techniques. 
And show me what we have in violation of those four steps. Yes, yeah, so that's the overview of the house. That's how the house looks. Well, on June 22, 22. Goodness. This is a picture of um, the rotten. The and period. for the record, the goodness in photograph, the first photograph was just total overgrowth of the, the vegetation on the house, it looked like. Yes, sir, but that's just the overview of the house. I, I, see, I like to see the whole house before we get started, how it looks from uh, on the street. Okay. Hey, photograph one. Yes, sir. That's rotten interior in wood and unsecured entry. <clears throat> okay. And is this a side front of the house? Yes, yeah, so that's the front. That's on North 14th Street. It looks like there's a gate across the door. Does that do anything about keeping anybody out? No, so the gate is open. It's not. Okay. Yes, sir. That's a picture on um, rotting right interior in wood. This is the, looks like the top of the porch. Yes, sir. Soffit. And that's a picture of the mold and mildew. <clears throat> it's also was taken June 22, 22. Okay. And that's a, the house is in there. That's the overgrown, <laughs> overgrown grass. <laughs> and that's one B that was taken Monday, 7, 18, 20, 22. Okay. That's, it looks the same. So we're looking at one B? Yes, sir. That's okay. taken on um, 7, 18, 22. That's another same picture of the rotten material with the unsecured entry. Taken also Monday. Just type on. Is there any evidence of anyone trying to live in this house? Sir? Is there any evidence of anyone trying to live in this house? Trying to live in it? Yeah. Just camping or I wouldn't trust it, but you know, get desperate, you probably just okay. That's a recent picture of the molding mill doing the walls. That was taken Monday, 7, 18, 22. Mm -hmm. And that's another picture of the overgrown grass that was taken. Okay. So obviously all this debris, vegetation, grass, and so forth needs to be cut, removed, yes, and trimmed. Yes, sir. Once you see the house, other than the, the walls on the side, is there anything in this house that can be saved? Do you know? No, sir. I mean, what's the remedy? It's, what, a, it's a block house, so the house may be able to be saved, but I'm not building a building inspector, so I couldn't tell you. So is the city's position that the roof needs to be removed yes, and sir. replaced? Replaced, removed and replaced. Oh, and then right. the, house, the house at least pressure washed and painted? Yes, pressure washed and painted with a uniform coat of paint. And then all of the grass and so forth. Mm -hmm. and trim. Yes, sir. All right. Again, making a call for a representative of 5T Wealth Partners LP. Mr. Brown. Yeah. We had one more violation with the broken one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go right ahead. We've seen it already. I mean, unless you want to see it again. Oh, no, no, no. You've seen them all? Yes, sir. All right. So you yes, ready? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I was making sure. I was just making sure that they were still here or not, oh. or not here as the case may be. And let the record show we have no one uh, responding to the call for a representative of 5T Wealth Partners LP. Did you take all the photographs you showed yes, today as demonstrative evidence? And do they actually represent the condition of the property on date in which you took them? Yes, sir. All right, we're good. All right, based on the evidence and testimony, we're gonna find a violation of 30-213-1A of the Municipal Code responsibilities of mortgagee and owners of vacant, blighted, unsecured, or abandoned structures due to the uh, multiple unsecured entries into buildings through doors and windows. A violation of section 30-32A prohibited conditions and public nuisances due to overgrown grass, weeds, and vegetation on the property. A violation of section 30-171 windows due to broken windows, multiple broken windows on all sides of the house. And finally, a violation of section 30-169 Building fronts and sides of budding streets are public areas. And we're talking about 14th Street only? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, rotten and weakened wood and deteriorating paint, which uh, needs to be replaced and repaired. 
We're going to enter an order finding the violation, uh, requiring compliance within 120 days of today's hearing. That is by the end of business on Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. In the event of non-compliance, a fine of $100 a day shall commence on Thursday, November 17th, 2022. Any news on a Zoom participant? No, sir, we've not had anybody <clears throat> add in. All right. We're gonna proceed with the case. Uh, number 2022-27. Owner appears to be, is it Carl Ma O. Knowles, I believe. Uh, property located at 516 Kirby Street in Palatka. Okay, Mr. Green. Yes, sir. This is also a proactive case. Um, the first observed 510-2022. Um, Note of hand was sent at 623-22. The green card did not come back. Um, the complex posted was 79-2022, and the site posting was the same day. Um, the violations are section 30-3032, fencing and disrepair, and 30-169, rotten, weakened wood, and mold and mildew on walls. All right, let me just inquire for the sake of uh, due process. Is Carl Ma O. Knowles or anyone representing Carl Ma O. Knowles present today? Seeing and hearing a warrant, Mr. Green. Yes. Yeah, let's back up. Let's back up and see what we did to notice them. Oh. Um, we sent the address. Let me get to. Looks like the certified mail was sent to Carl Ma O. Knowles at 28632 6th Place South. Des Moines, Washington, yes, sir. 98198. And the green card looks like it was sent back unsigned. And did you notice the property? Sir. And you placed notice on the property? Yes, I did. Yes. And, 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 picture. and see an affidavit of service showing the notice was for the hearing and of the violation was placed on the property on July 7th, 2022. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Your affidavit is here. It also shows it was noticed on City Hall on the same date. Have any contact with Carlman Knowles or anyone representing Carlman? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Cutright? Yes, we received several phone calls from Mr. Knowles uh, asking about this hearing. Uh, we also sent his wife uh, a link so they are, they are notified of what's going on. With this well, did they indicate um, their awareness of the situation and indicating yes. what they might do about it? Well, he would want to know exactly what the city wanted him to do about it. So we gave him, and I said he would get more detail in the hearing. So he was actually supposed to have been on the Zoom call, him and his wife. So they are, they are notified. Okay. All right. All right, very well. All right, Mr. Green, you've got two violations. Uh, first one has to do, and I'll, I'll read the ordinances in just to make sure we have those. 30-32AA10, prohibited conditions of public nuisances, fencing and disrepair. Uh, that code provision provides uh, 30-32A10. All right. Is this somebody's phone? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. That's okay. Fair to replace or repair within similar improved material in a reasonable period, not to exceed 60 days, broken or missing building components, including but not limited to doors, windows, roof material, siding, and drives, walks. Um, trying to see fences. Okay. It looks like I've got, oh, here it is. It goes on the next page. Okay. It's in the. All right, subsection 11, we'll get to it here. Failure to repair, place, remove broken fencing, screening, or decorative elements on a developed parcel or lot constitutes a violation of section 30-32A, A, it's like 11 in that case. And also it's a violation of 30-169 of the city code, building fronts and sides of budding streets or public areas due to rotten, weakened wood, mold, and mildew on the walls. Uh, that ordinance in 
pertinent part reads, all deteriorated structural and decorative elements visible from a public right of way shall be repaired or replaced. Every such part of a structure visible from a public right of way or abutting a street shall be made structurally sound. Rotten or weakened portions shall be removed, repaired, replaced in a manner compatible with the rest of the structure or to match the original materials and construction techniques. Basically, it looks like we have fencing, rotten and weakened wood facing Kirby Street and mold and mildew on the walls facing Kirby yes. Street. All right. Show me what you have. Paint and we expose wood. That's an overview of the house from on um, Kirby Street. I was taking 411 to 22. That is the left side of the house. I guess we would call it a balcony of some sort. Um, that's the left side of the house if you're facing it. Is that like the bottom of a porch? What is yes, that? Yes, sir. Okay. It's right there. Okay. On the top part. It's unusual the way that was built uh, as yeah. it, it came up there. And that's the left, that's the right side of the house. If you're facing it from Kirby Street. And that was taken 411, 2022. And that's the front of the porch. This is, on, this is located where? In front of the porch. On the porch? Okay. Yes, that's facing. Yes. And that's the exposed wood, not painted or stained. Okay. And that's the porch facing Kirby Street. Wood, exposed wood, not painted or stained. Well, were they working on the house at some point and, and scraped it? I don't know, sir. <laughs> There was, doesn't look like there was ever any paint on that. They may have been replacing it, I guess. But. Okay. And that's the fencing and disrepair. And that was taken for 11, 2022. What needs to be done to bring that into compliance? Just they replace the stairs? Press the washing and um, replace it. Or repair it with similar materials or better. Okay. And that's the mold and mildew on the wall. Looking at number seven? Yes, sir. And I was taking forward 11, 20, 22. That's 7, 18, 20, 22. This picture was taken. That's the left side of the house. Got a little shade yeah. that morning. This isn't at issue, but just looking at this, this, this structure that just kind of erupts out of the roof of this house, was that, did that meet any known code the way that's done? It looks to me like the, the water just kind of drains down off the side of it and goes. What I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the roof. Above the porch or the balcony, what what one want to call it, had a hole in it and, and it leaked in and the water. That's the only way the water could escape on either side in the front. Because you see it's on the bottom and look okay. like water damage. So really. Because it just destroyed the wood on the side of this this structure. It doesn't sound like the water is getting away from there very well. That's not necessarily the issue. They got to fix that when they bring it back. But it's an unusual looking. Uh, arrangement. Let's put it that way. However, and that's the right side of the house. I think it got. I think it got worse, and that was taken seven, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Okay. Well, it's not getting better. No, sir. And that's on um, the front again. That was taken seven, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. All right. Where is this located? So on I the front Kirby, side, sir. On the front side yes, of the sir. house. Yes, sir. They're looking at three B. Okay. And that's another picture of the exposed wood that was not painted or stained. And that was taken 7, 18, 2022. This is a pretty big house. Yeah. There's another picture of the front, exposed wood not painted or stained. And the same fence in, in disrepair, 7, 18, 22. And did the owners indicate to you when they bought this house what their eventual plan was? I mean, were they planning to repair and move I in? Or? I haven't spoke with them at all. How oh, come? Okay. And that's in the picture of 71822, <clears throat> the mold and mildew on the walls. And that's on the right side of the house. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Did you, did you take all the photographs? Yes, sir. And do they actually represent the condition of the property on the date in which you took them? Yes, sir. All right. Based on the evidence and testimony presented, we're going to find a violation of section 30-32A10 
of the city code due to prohibited conditions and public nuisances to the fencing and disrepair fence has missing staves needs to be cleaned um, and repainted. Section 30-169 of the city code, building fronts inside the budding streets or public areas, the street in question being Kirby Street and rotten and weakened wood and mold and mildew on the walls, uh, like on the sides of the uh, elevated porch, uh, on the sides of the uh, main sides of the house, um, the wood is either weakened, uh, had mold and mildew or is unpainted. We're gonna enter an order of finding the violations, uh, requiring compliance within 60 days of the date of today's hearing, uh, the 60th day being at the end of business on Monday, September 19th, 2022. This, Mr. Brown, one more thing, they own, they are in the historic district, so they might need to contact or consult with the North Historic District. South, 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 South Historic District. Do you do which now? They're, they're in the, they are in the um, historic district, so they may want to consult with the South Historic District for any repairs or anything that can be done to that house. I leave that up to them. Figure out how they want to do I, it. I just had to let them know. I just want to let them know. Are you is sixty days enough time to do all this? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are running the city. I'm gonna. So basically, they got to go through a historic district review. Yes, sir, I guess. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, is that enough time? In all fairness. Well, Miss Walsh is here, and she is the um, liaison from the city for the. Historic okay. preservation districts. I mean, I'm I'm amenable to whatever the city thinks it's going to take to get this done. It's, could you just identify yourself for the record. Lisa Walsh, planning director, City Placa. If they are doing ordinary repair and maintenance, that is a certificate of appropriateness that I can approve at the staff level. If they have to go before the board, if they're going to do any other alterations to the structure that will take more time because they have to submit an application then we have noticing periods and a, a monthly meeting schedule for the historic preservation board so it would take more time if they do have to come before the board but from the what i have seen if they're just repairing what they've got in the violations that should be something i can approve at the staff level so if the city wants them to have permits in hand and the job done within 60 days they're not sure they're going to get there even if they started today It'd be a little so tight. what's a reasonable time for this? 90 to 100. 120, yeah. How many? 120. 120 days. 120 days. Yes, All right. And it's a good it's a good point to raise yes, in terms of what it's actually going to take to go through the extra steps of the process. Kind of, we all know how much fun historical preservation can be. <laughs> Sir, I did not just hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell a war story when we're done. Thank All right, you. so we're going, to, what's 120 days? 120 days. 120 days is uh, November 16th. 16th, all right. Yes, sir. Good. Just as much, uh, same as the other cases, sir. So we'll enter an order finding the violations as indicated and require compliance no later than the end of business on uh, Wednesday, September, November 16th. Yes, sir, that's correct. 2022. Uh, in the event of non-compliance, a fine of $50 a day shall commence with on the, um, Thursday, November 17th, 2022. All right. There being no further business before the federal magistrate, according to our agenda, we're going to adjourn 